So we're in the airway and breathing course continuing here with our fundamental unit and we're going to talk about oxygenation and then uh, after that we'll deal with ventilation and then the airway anatomy lesson. Oxygenation is one of the two major important uh, key functions. The patients have to be oxygenated and they need to be ventilated. So some basic concepts here. This cellular respiration concept meaning that cells in order to do whatever their job is, cells need energy in order to work. They make energy most efficiently with aerobic metabolism and the use of oxygen to generate energy to do cell functions. And that occurs at the cellular level, involves the use of oxygen uh, and glucose to make energy for that cell. <clears throat> and so this concept of cellular respiration is all about us getting oxygen to the cells. Oxygen to the nasal hairs, oxygen to the trachea, that's all well and good, but it doesn't really matter how well we're oxygenating the nose or the trachea. It only matters if we're getting oxygen to the cells. So cellular respiration and oxygenation of cells is really dependent on a legitimate concentration of O2 in the inspired air. If you're in a low oxygen environment, um, you're going to have oxygenation problems even if all the rest of the mechanics, all the rest of the system is working. So that's kind of a duh sort of point, but we should bring it up to be complete. And then once that oxygen is inspired and gets to the alveoli, the alveolar capillary membrane is also important. That should be a very thin membrane where gases can diffuse back and forth across that membrane. Oxygen into the blood, carbon dioxide out of the blood. If that membrane is not intact because the alveoli are destroyed or full of pus or blood or fluid or that membrane has swollen as in CHF and other things, then we don't have that intact membrane and that's a key piece of this whole process. So we need to get oxygen in, get it down to the alveoli, get it into the bloodstream and then we need to perfuse it around. So ventilation and perfusion also of course play into the whole process. We really just wanted to talk about oxygenation um, in, in this particular lesson. So how do you measure oxygenation? Well, a person who is not oxygenating is hypoxic. And at the cellular level in the tissues, those tissues are ischemic, but the patient themselves is hypoxic. We can't really measure hypoxia directly, although we would like to, so we have to use hypoxemia. We have to use a surrogate to measure hypoxia. So now we're dealing with measuring the oxygen content in the bloodstream looking for hypoxemia. The theory there being that if there's inadequate oxygen in the bloodstream, there almost certainly will be inadequate oxygen at the, at the cellular level. How do you measure hypoxemia? Well, you measure it with a pulse oximeter. And, um, you know, it's important to realize that with any of the data that we get, whether it's pulse oximetry, capnography, ECG, blood pressure, you can only really make a valid decision, a good solid decision for your patient if you've got good solid data. If you have an inaccurate pulse oximeter reading, then you're likely to make inaccurate decisions about patient management. And so we spend some time in class um, and continually reinforce throughout our cases about the signal strength. Are you getting a good reading? And we have a good lesson for you in the uh, Moodle uh, comp component of the course. Uh, a lot of stuff about pulse oximetry in terms of how to get a good signal, how to see if your signal is uh, accurate, what are some things that fool the pulse oximetry, and we deal with uh, some common myths, you know, fingernail polish and some of that sort of stuff. But pulse oximetry as a, as a concept, pulse oximetry is a measure of hypoxemia, low oxygen in the bloodstream, and that we're going to use as a surrogate to assume that hypoxemia equals hypoxia for, for our purposes. Again, oxygenation lesson. We'll follow this with a ventilation lesson. And uh, these are two extremely important concepts. If your patient's not oxygenating, your patient's not ventilating, your patient's not doing well.